Greetings. Uh, I'm Douglas Wicks, a program director at ARPA E, uh, here to share uh, a little bit of information about an interest area for ARPA E. And this is a topic that kind of focuses on urban waste recovery for a low carbon built environment. Um, so, what are we interested in? in? In this program area that we're thinking about, we're interested in getting our waste back into the economy. Uh, there's a lot of work, uh, especially being pushed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, talking about how do we shift from a, a one-way economy where we use and throw out uh, to something where we bring materials back in to the economy through advanced recycling uh, methods. But the thing to keep in mind is not all waste can be economically recycled and actually cannot be environmentally recycled. Uh, so for the rest, we are looking at some ideas. Um, we're focused very heavily on waste to energy, and so we're looking at redeploying the energy from this process. Um, we're also making, uh, looking at uh, how do we make the residual waste in the products for the built environment, and, and then understanding the waste stream going forward. So the opportunity really is diversion from the landfills. Uh, the EPA tracks um, the generation of waste in the United States, uh, and you know they've come up with roughly 292 million tons of municipal solid waste being collected. This is the waste we put out in our garbage cans on the street or into dumpsters. Uh, additionally, they keep track of 600 million tons of construction and demolition waste. Uh, that is generated from our economy. And if we look just at the municipal solid waste, um, over time, about 50%, something over 50% goes to landfill. Uh, a small amount um, relatively goes to waste to energy. It is very stable. And as we can see over time, we've increased our ability to recycle materials but still put over 50% into landfill. And, and that comes out to about 150 million tons of municipal solid waste, uh, and also 150 million tons of construction and demolition waste. So when we look at the current waste to energy processes, um, this utilizes uh, municipal waste to generate heat through a combustion process. Uh, each ton of municipal solid waste releases about 11 million BTUs. Uh, to put that in perspective, that's about half of what you would get from a ton of coal. Uh, so it's actually a fairly energy rich uh, material. Uh, in current practices, this reduces the landfill volume of the municipal solid waste by 87% and its weight by 75%. Uh, so it, it's a good way to extend the life of our landfills uh, if we just throw it out. Um, modern units are really environmentally benign and very heavily focused on uh, reduction of, of uh, airborne emissions from the combustion process. And the current model um, looks at producing steam and electricity for sale. And the electricity is a key component of that, with about half of the income of an existing waste to energy plant coming from the electricity sales. Um, the current challenge that we're facing uh, is that in the U.S., the value of waste to energy electricity is plummeting, really understand, undercutting their cost structure. Uh, and this is a macroeconomic issue. It's affecting all uh, energy generation systems. Um, while at the same time, regulatory and environmental liabilities are really putting a lot of pressure on landfills. So the question is, what do we need to do to drive the system that we eliminate materials that are going to landfills? So first thing we're looking at in this area is innovative redeployment of energy from waste. So how do we divert um, the waste to energy process away from grid electricity. So this is electricity that's sold into the grid. Um, are there ideas out there uh, for the direct use of the thermal energy that comes out of this process? 
Um, are there innovative ideas around combined heat and power applications uh, for waste to energy that go beyond what we're doing now? Um, is there the ability to recover the embedded carbon in a useful form? We look at our waste and it is by weight, uh, somewhere around one third carbon based uh, species. Can we recover that economically into a useful form that can replace something else? Uh, another big challenge with waste to energy is given the geographic distribution of the United States, is can we develop economically viable processes at less than 100 tons per day? Stop, I'll correct that slide. Uh, uh, other ideas is the integration of waste to energy to solve other environmental issues. Uh, can we replace hard to decarbonize, decarbonize processes? Can we process our municipal solid waste with other waste streams to take care of two problems at once? Um, can we use waste to energy in innovative ways for greenhouse gas mitigation? Can we put them into water treatment or water purification processes, use the energy there? And any of a number of other ideas, which we don't have time to talk about here. So the next topic is to look at uh, our construction and demolition waste. You know, as I mentioned earlier, we generate about 600 million tons of construction and demolition waste. The materials in this include wood, gypsum, bricks, slag, shingles, concrete, uh, a whole variety of things. Uh, about 10% of that comes from construction waste as we're building our buildings. Uh, the other 90 come from the demolition process. Uh, it's important to keep in mind about 75% of our construction and demolition waste is already recovered. Our industry has done a great job. It's crushed to make aggregate uh, that goes back into road building or construction. Uh, asphalt that's taken off of our roads can be reheated and uh, for reuse. Um, and some is actually reused or repurposed directly uh, as it comes out. And the final solution for a lot of it is clean fill, um, you know, to put under our roads or into uh, construction projects. So what we're looking at is redeployment of, of construction demolition waste uh, for the built environment. Um, if we look at the characteristics of current reuse, uh, it's typically downcycling, not recycling. So we're taking a valuable product and coming back in and using it in a less valuable product. Uh, these materials have to compete with low cost alternatives. Uh, there's a whole variety of materials when we're making aggregates, we're looking at competing with the price of gravel. So it's not a value added process that generates uh, a sustainable um, uh, business model. So what we're looking for is ideas that will help us change the value proposition. Um, can we take this uh, construction and demolition waste and really displace hard to decarbonize materials? So going back to the beginning, uh, can we thermochemically regenerate cement? Um, can we directly produce uh, building components out of uh, the waste as received? Um, can we use the energy from municipal solid waste combustion, what we talked about earlier, um, to help this process? And again, there's probably a myriad of ideas out there that we can address at this time uh, that uh, RPE would like to know about. Um, Final topic for this, this short um, webinar is, is to look at the composition of our urban waste stream. Um, it, we have to look at our waste and say that every load, so when a truck picks up your garbage on, on the side of the road, every load of this is unique. Uh, it varies by neighborhood, it varies by calendar uh, times, uh, it varies by weather events. And so when we have a major weather event, our garbage composition changes. Uh, we've seen actually major changes in the garbage composition over uh, the last months due to the ongoing pandemic situation. And, and if we look at current characterization methods, uh, they're, they're really very simple and straightforward. Uh, 
we can uh, dump the garbage out of a truck and hand sort it and weigh it uh, to get an idea what's what's in there. And that's done on a consistent basis uh, by communities. Or uh, as the EPA done, we can estimate based on the entire economy. So basically looking at what's sold and its lifetime and the assumption is uh, that ends up on our waste. Um, but that, that neither of these methods tell us what's in, um, uh, in the value stream on a given day as we look at the process of this. So what we're looking for is information and ideas around the use of artificial intelligence and, and sensors to understand the urban waste streams composition. And, and it's under the idea that we can't control what we can't count or measure. So if we don't know what's in there, uh, it, it's very hard to plan a reuse. And, and to give you an idea of the problem size, um, there's more than 60,000 truckloads a day of municipal solid waste picked up. Diverse substances from a material composition, its density, its toxicity, and et cetera. Uh, we have to be able to understand what's inside of the packaging of our garbage. Uh, there's a variety of containers and bags. There might be multiple layers around our materials. Uh, we also have to look at the fact that it's various states that this material comes back to us. It's not the original form. We have contamination. It may be broken or altered. It has really an unknown history of where it came from. Uh, and when we look across the, the data acquisition points, th there's a variety of places that we can look across the collection chain for information. Um, we can look at the generation source. So are, are there ideas that help us with households or public receptacles to say what's in the can before it goes? Uh, at the curbside, in our trash cans and our dumpsters, there are areas, again, that can be looked into. Uh, the trucks and transfer um, vehicles can be you know, used as acquisition points. Uh, we have transfer points where the, the um, local garbage is brought in um, by a, a garbage truck and transferred to a different to a different facility. And then we have the final dumping floor, whether it's a landfill or a waste energy plant. And and really, we look at this is that the key to this understanding has to be an artificial intelligence or machine learning driven. Uh, there's many ways we can characterize uh, our garbage uh, coming in. So the question is, how do you bring all of the information about our um, municipal solid waste into one place where we can then take an actionable output, either from a processing standpoint or a policy standpoint, um, to go forward to get it back into our economy. So, that kind of in conclusion, I would like to give idea, give a list of what we're really not interested in. So, we're not looking for people to submit ideas to us that propose technology that's already in practice. We're looking for breakthrough technologies. We're not looking again for onshoring of technology practiced outside of the United States. Uh, if, if you look into uh, many of our fellow countries, they do a better job with municipal solid waste, but it's under a very different environment uh, from a policy and economics. We're not looking for simple me mechanical manipulation of waste. So if it's a sorting mechanism, uh, simple sorting mechanism or crushing or, or compaction, we're not looking for that. Uh, we're not looking for concepts or not interesting concepts that do not improve the economics of waste disposal. If we look at the waste systems, we spend billions every year on this um, to throw out valuable materials. And the question is, can we improve the economics of this such that it's no longer a burden on the country? Uh, we're, we're also not looking for concepts that require onerous citizen sorting or compliance methods. We are the United States. Um, our our uh, citizens would very much like to have it very easy, and we have to expect that. And if we require uh, onerous or, um, sorting and compliance, it's not going to happen. 
Uh, we're also looking for solutions that do not address the environmental concerns of waste. So any ideas really have to look at the fact we don't want to see ideas that uh, lead to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions or result in toxic releases to the air, water, and land. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and look forward to hearing the ideas. <music>